the PlayStation Vita is almost at the end of its life cycle, with Sony ending production of the system and physical releases no longer being produced outside of Asia. So now is the time to invest in the Vita's ecosystem, because unfortunately, the system and its games aren't going to get any cheaper. In this video, I'm going to examine all the different versions of the Vita and help you choose the one that will suit your needs. First up is the 1000 Wi-Fi model. This is the unit I picked up at launch in February 2012 alongside a copy of Touch My Katamari and Uncharted Golden Abyss. I was immediately blown away by the system's capabilities and huge selection of launch games. I'll explain how the 1000 differs from the other models when we get to the Manju course. But the key feature of the 1000 compared to the 2000 model is this gorgeous OLED screen. Of course, the limitations of OLED include potential burn-in, and the screen might degrade over time. In fact, when playing the system in the dark, I can notice a faint mirror effect when the screen is completely black. Having said that, it's still a beautiful screen, and probably the best one I've ever seen on a handheld. It's worth noting the 1000 model uses a proprietary connection for the charging cable, which can be difficult to replace. The only other unique property is the accessory port, which is kind of redundant since it was never used for anything and was eventually dropped in future revisions. Because the system doesn't come with any built-in storage, you'll need to invest in the memory stick or else you won't be able to save your progress. Next up is the 1000 3G Plus Wi-Fi, which is basically the same as the previous 1000 model, except it has built-in 3G connectivity. On the side you'll find a slot that houses the SIM card. Please note the system is locked to a vendor based on your region. For example, Australia and Europe are restricted to Vodafone, while America uses AT&T. Because of the added 3G hardware, this model weighs 20 grams more than the Wi-Fi only model, something to bear in mind if the extra weight bothers you. Although, I can't really recommend the 3G model since the standard is becoming redundant, not to mention you can't download files bigger than 20 megabytes or play games online over the 3G network. This means you're restricted to using the web browser or taking a gander at leaderboards. If you really need remote internet connectivity, you're better off using your mobile phone as a wireless hotspot. You can do better than that. Now we move on to the 2000 model, which is my personal pick and currently my go-to model for playing Vita games. Admittedly, the LCD screen isn't as vibrant as the OLED screen in the 1000 model, but the positives far outweigh the negatives. To begin with, the 2000 model gains an extra hour of battery life compared to its predecessor. The system is also lighter and slimmer than the 1000 model, making it more comfortable to hold for extended periods of play. These revisions extend to the controls, with the home, start and select buttons being more responsive due to their increased size. In addition to this, Sony reduced the size of the back touchpad and will help minimize the chance of unintentional inputs. Another welcome change is the system now uses a conventional micro USB type B connection for charging cables. Inside the 2000 model is one gigabyte of built-in storage, which is enough for save files, but larger patches and bigger game files will demand the purchase of a memory stick. Between the smaller form factor and other improvements, the Slim has become my preferred way to play Vita games. Looks like someone took the hit. Now it's time for the PlayStation TV, or Vita TV, as it was originally known in Asian markets. It's essentially a consoleized version of the Vita that allows you to play Vita games on your TV using a PS3 or PS4 controller. Because the system lacks any form of touch, the Vita TV emulates this by using the analog sticks, and if you own a PS4 controller, you can also make use of the touchpad. The Vita TV will no doubt appeal to someone who hates handhelds, but still wants to check out the vast library of Vita games. It's also a great device for capturing gameplay footage, but you'll need to strip out the HDCP encoding, or else your capture device won't record any footage. Well, that can't be right. This is a bug. However, the system has an Achilles heel. Inside the OS is a compatibility whitelist that dictates what you cannot play in the system, and annoyingly, this varies from region to region. For example, the European version of Ninja Garden Sigma doesn't work on the Vita TV, while an imported American copy works without any hassle. I can understand why something like Uncharted wouldn't work on the system since it can't emulate the camera or gyroscope, 
but games like Street Fighter Cross Tekken and Unit 13 are perfectly playable in the system, yet Sony still chose to blacklist them. Fortunately, you can overcome this limitation using Homebrew, and while Valve has its own share of problems, Gabe Newell was on point when he said the best way to combat piracy is to offer a better service than the pirates. Unfortunately, Sony ignored this advice when they designed the ecosystem for the Vita TV. Despite my negativity, I still like the Vita TV and often use it for capturing gameplay footage, but because of the system's poor sales, they're extremely uncommon and can fetch a pretty penny on auction sites like eBay. So much for diplomacy. Before I leave, here's a quick recap. The Vita 2000 is my pick because of its lighter weight, longer battery and improved buttons. While the 1000 model might appeal to someone with larger hands and those who can't resist the allure of its beautiful OLED screen. The 3G model on the other hand is kind of redundant due to restrictions placed on its bandwidth and also weighs a little more than the model without 3G. Finally, the PlayStation TV is best suited for anyone who wants to play Vita games on their TV and is also a convenient way to capture gameplay footage, assuming you find a way to get around the HDCP encoding. Well, that's a wrap. I would like to thank Adam for loaning me his 3G model for this video and thank you to anyone who watched the entire video. Please let me know if you plan on buying a Vita and which model you choose. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video.